Hey guys, it's Darwin here with my final gear for the PCT video. And today we're talking about my cook system. Yes, I said cook system and my water storage system for my 2,650 mile through hike of the Pacific Crest Trail. So if you guys are not familiar with this series, I started it last year. I wanted to break down my gear setup into different categories so you could see just my closed system or just my big three or my cook system and water storage. So if you haven't had a chance to check out all the other gear for the PCT videos that I've done, I'll put links to all of those in the description box below. And then in about two weeks, I'll be putting out my final gear list a full spread showing you guys everything that I'll be taking for my through hike of the Pacific Crest Trail. Today we are talking about water storage and cook system. Yes, I said cook system. You guys know that I'm a huge cold soaking fan, but there are some times out on the trail that I want to cook, so I am taking a full on system. First up, let's talk about water storage. Now, what I have decided to take is about a five liter capacity. So because there is that first 700 miles in the desert, obviously there are times where I'm gonna have to carry more water because it is a big dry section. Now, averagely people will carry between five and seven liters of water. I'm gonna go with five and then if for some reason I have to pick up some extra water storage, I can always grab some extra bottles when I am in a town. Now, the first thing that I'm gonna be carrying are the tried and true smart water bottles. So I'm gonna be carrying three of these, three one liter bottles. Uh, if you notice, two of these have a sports cap on there. The reason that I like the sports cap is the one that I keep up here on my shoulder strap. Obviously, I just wanna be able to flip that open real quick and take a drink. But the other reason is the sports cap is actually very good for being able to back flush your Sawyer filter if you are using some sort of a squeeze filter. Now, either the Sawyer filter or the Hydro Blue, but that is why I choose to go with the sports cap. Now, the reason I don't put it on my third bottle is because if for some reason I have no time to filter while I'm hiking, I use my third bottle for dirty water. So most of the time I'm gonna be putting clean water in it, but there are times where I might wanna fill it up with dirty. So having that different cap definitely helps me figure out what not to drink straight out of the bottle. That is three liters of water storage that I'll be carrying. And then the second piece of gear that I'll have for water storage is my Knock Vecto water container. Now the Knock Vecto water container is a two liter water bladder. And I've done a review on this. If you guys wanna check that out, I'll put a link up here. But essentially what it is, is it has a big wide mouth opening. So it allows you to collect a lot of water at one time, two liters. And then the other side actually has a little screw top lid that allows you to thread on a filter straight onto the bottle. So then you can squeeze it out. Now, that's what I'll be doing with it most of the time and then putting my water in my three smart water bottles but it is two liters, so if I have to, I can always fill this up with water, strap it to the top of my pack, and that's where I come up with having a five liter water storage capacity. Now, speaking of a filter to thread onto here, the filter that I'm gonna be taking for my entire hike is a classic. It's the Sawyer Squeeze Regular. Now, I did have one of these crap out on me for the first time ever in all the years that I've used a Sawyer Squeeze out on the Penhody Trail. It got clogged up with something. I think that it's calcium from tap water, but I had to throw it away. And this is the one that I actually picked up on the Penhody Trail. And I've added this little uh, tip to it that actually allows me to be able to back flush it a lot better. So if you have this blue tip on your Sawyer filter and you have these sports caps, it actually fits right on there, snug, and then it allows you to squeeze water through it and back flush the filter without having the syringe. So multifunctional piece of gear. Now I've been getting a lot of questions lately about why I'm not using my Hydra Blue Versa Flow filter that I used on the Arizona Trail. Um, I like that filter a lot, but kind of the same reason that I don't carry a Sawyer Squeeze Mini is the flow rate is just really slow. Um, even with those Hydra Blues, the flow rate is better than the Sawyer Squeeze Mini, I found out, but it's still not as good as the regular Sawyer. 
and the regular Sawyer only weighs a little bit more, so it's definitely worth taking over one of the minis, just so I don't have to worry about back flushing it as much. Now with the little cap up here, my Sawyer Squeeze weighs in at 2.6 ounces on my scale. My Knock Vecto water container also weighs in at 2.6 ounces on my scale. And each one of these smart water bottles weighs in at 1.4 ounces, making my entire water storage system come in at 9.6 ounces. So 9.6 ounces is not too shabby, for five liters of water and a way to filter it. All right, next up is my cook system. Again, yes, I said cook system. I know that I stress a lot that I love cold soaking, but the truth is I really only wanna cold soak for the first 700 miles of the PCT in the desert. And then when I get to Kennedy Meadows, I wanted to pick up a stove so I could cook hot food through the Sierras. Now it's not because I think it's gonna be colder necessarily, it's just because it's a change of pace. Whenever you eat cold soaked food for so long, it kind of becomes boring. Same as cooking backpacking food out on the trail, it kind of becomes boring. So just having a way to switch up, that's why I wanted to trade it out. So the original plan was to carry my Talenti cold soaking jar up until Kennedy Meadows and then get rid of that and pick up my Snow Peak mug and my stove. Instead, I have switched to the Vargo Bot 700 Titanium Screw Top Mug. Now, I recently did a full review on this, talking about what I really liked about it and what I didn't really like about it, some of the nuisances. If you guys wanna check that review out, I'll put a link up here and I'll put a link in the description box below. But essentially what it is, is it is like my Snow Peak mug, except for it has a screw top lid, so I can cold soak that first 700 miles, but when I get to Kennedy Meadows, I can put it on a stove and cook with it as well. Now the Vargo Bot comes in at 4.8 ounces, which isn't too bad. It's a little bit heavier than my Snow Peak mug, but since I don't have to switch it out, uh, with the Talenti jar, it's definitely worth the extra weight for me. And because I'm not gonna be switching out my cold soaking container for my cook mug, I will also be carrying the entire trail, the BRS Ultra Light Stove. Now I have talked a lot about this stove and I've now been using it for about a year and a half um, and it's excellent. It is insanely light coming in only at point nine ounces so not even an ounce for this thing and that's 0.9 ounces with its little stuff sack that it comes with and because it weighs so little i'm just going to carry it all the way from the beginning that way if for some reason i'm in the desert and i want a hot meal and i'm just tired of cold soaking all i have to do is pick up a fuel canister and then i have a full-on cook system with the pot so totally worth carrying like i said under an ounce, I'm just gonna put it in my bag and kind of forget about it, and just in case I need it, it is there. I have a Bic Mini lighter, um, because, you know, you don't need a regular size Bic. The Bic Mini comes in at 0.3 ounces, and this is the second Bic Mini that I've had in a while. The first Bic Mini that I had, I used it on the entire Appalachian Trail, and it never ran out. I never, ever, need more than just a big mini. I have a light load towel. So this is something that I used to carry on the Appalachian Trail. I haven't carried one in a while, but I like having one. So if I am cooking or cold soaking in my pot, I can use this to kind of wipe out my pot or really clean my spork off or anything else. These things are super cheap. It weighs half an ounce for this big old towel. So it's definitely worth keeping that in my cook system. Um, so that's coming with me. And then last but not least is my spork. So this is my tried and true C to Summit Alpha Aluminum Spork. It's funny because I have bought titanium ones, but I always seem to come back to the Alpha Aluminum one. It only weighs in at 0.4 ounces, and yeah, it's perfect. Uh, it's nice and long, so I can get down into like one of those backpacker pantry mills if for some reason I'm eating one of those. And well, there's not much else to say about it. It's a spork, and sporks are just great. Next up is my food storage. Now, for the first 700 miles, I'm going to be using something different than what I'll be using whenever I get to the Sierras. When I get to the Sierras, I'll have to pick up a bear canister. So I'm not going to show that in this video. I'm either thinking about carrying the BV450 or the BV500. I have a 450. I'm not sure if it's gonna be enough room, so I might be picking up a 500 right before I go. But what I will be carrying all the way from Mexico to Canada is my bear bag. So my food bag and what I use is the Z-Packs Cuban Fiber, I think they're called Blast Food Bags. 
Now, I had one for years. It's what I used and put a ton of miles on. It finally gave out on me. It started leaking because all the seams started to finally come apart. So I had to order a new one. Um, but it is a ton of room to put all the food that I need in. I think that the new ones are actually bigger than the old one that I used to have. And then along with the Z-Pax bear bag, it also comes with a bear bag hanging kit, which is a small rock bag. 50 feet of Z line and a little carabiner so I can throw it up in a tree to get it away from bears or chipmunks or raccoons or whatever other critter is running around on the ground that wants to eat my food. Now, like I said, when I do get to certain parts of the trail, I will have to carry a bear canister. However, you don't have to carry a bear canister for the entire trail. So I will use this about 90% of the time on the trail and then use the can when I have to. The bear bag and the rock bag and the carabiner and the Z line and all that comes in at 3.3 ounces, which is pretty light to do all that it can do and store all the food that it can store. Now, I think that the bear canister weighs over two pounds. So man, I wish I could carry this the entire time, but you gotta follow the rules and leave no trace. So my entire water storage system and filter and cook system and food storage comes in at 10 point four ounces so 10.4 ounces for all of that is pretty groovy for my pack setup and i'm pretty happy with that all right guys so like i said i will be doing a full final gear video spreading out all of my gear and showing you that but if you haven't had a chance to check out all the other gear for the pct videos i'll put links to all of those in the description box below you can go check out my ditty bag my clothes setup my big three and my desert protection video if you haven't had a chance yet go over and check me out on instagram i've been posting a lot of new photos throughout the week plus i'll be trying to post a picture a day from my pct through hike as long as i have signal if you found any value in this video go ahead and hit that like button subscribe to my channel if you haven't already and as always guys thanks for watching